All right, so I am here with Marcus and McFeely, two titans of comic book legend. Titans is a loaded word. I, oh, it's man. intentionally a loaded yeah, word, and and legend yeah, as well. Sure. There's a lot in also, there. Also a loaded. Titanic legend. That's I right. appreciate the fact that you guys are so invested in the world that that everyone at this convention grew up with, and it feels like it's coming from a place of heart. And there's just so much detail in everything you guys write. I was at the Agbo announcement earlier today, and I feel like we got another nine movie slate that none of us were ready for. Which things are you guys involved with? I know you're you're part of that process. Yes, no, we're partners in Agbo. Uh, so we've written one script. We wrote one script last year, which is sort of a, a true life, important political story. And then this year, we're working on Electric State. That's the uh, sort of post-apocalyptic alternate 1996 girl in a robot oh, movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've been uh, we're, we're producing Thomas Crown Affair, so that means we helped uh, uh, Matt Carnahan sort of shape the story. Um, and I. I don't know if anything else on that list were things that, uh, that we we're are touching at the moment. Today. Yeah. yeah. We're working on a bunch of other stuff. I mean, slightly secret. It yeah. is a <laughs> it is a bit of a uh, you know, we are we are lighting a bunch of fires. That's right. I, it, can you say a number? Like is there a uh, amount of active scripts? Yeah, that you're so for with? Chris and I, we sort of uh, are helping shepherd uh, helping other writers shepherd maybe five or six tentpole type movies mm -hmm. and then we're electric state is meant to be one that we write mm -hmm. and then we'll pro we will write another we'll write one every year okay. and then help out where we can and you know sort of sit in the room and help Amazing. break story yeah. idle hands not happening yeah. i respect <laughs> it could be a little more <laughs> idle it'd be better for my brain now endgame is coming out on digital on july 30th and then blu-ray on august 13th i'm yeah. a tangible media guy so, so i got a couple of weeks good yes i just i want to i want to own it i want to yeah. hold it i don't I trust the CDs. cloud i know everybody <laughs>, laughs but what? I There's want to something own a thing. magic, and the smell of opening the disc the first time, I will not let go. Now, I'm wondering with this ending, this giant 11 year run, I love the fact that Tony and Cap's arcs exchange. We've got selfish to selfless, yeah. and vice versa, uh -huh. and then Thor basically finding himself. Yeah. So you've got the Holy Trinity all having self existential crises. That's How right. How early did those seeds get planted, as for your perspective on where you wanted it to end if it worked out? Um, well, I think you could see particularly by the time of Civil War, that Tony and Steve were starting to cross over. Yeah. Where Steve was, you know, Steve was rebelling against authority. Against Making a authority, personal decision, yeah. And, and Tony was signing up with the government. And, uh, and it was a very, you know, it was not initially started intentionally right. but when we saw it happening it it was it felt oh that's that's really meaty yeah we and had can a take it we far. had a point probably late 2015 as we were outlining where we realized and we knew where we kind of wanted to take tony and steve by the end uh, and it was sort of a end of the day moment where we went oh in order to become his best self tony stark's gonna have to lose his life Mm -hmm. And in order to become his best self, Steve Rogers is going to have to get one, right? Yeah. And we went, ah, we're good. You know, that's yeah. a, that's a nice little moment. We're good. Now we just yeah. have to write two now movies. Now we just got to write these them. movies. The but yeah, yeah, but that seemed a good flag to to drive into the ground and, and so run So the center it. of the axe was fittingly Civil War in a way. Yeah. yeah Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, is there any? I know the rewrite process is insane, and I know Spider Man. There was a script without and with, and there's some. Oh, for Civil War. Yeah. For Civil, yeah. for Civil War for sure. Yeah. Now, were there yeah. any darlings you had to kill that are especially hard? Now that it's kind of you know a different chapter yeah, is starting. Was there a moment that you really were like, man, I wanted that in Civil War? In in any of the films. In any of the films. Uh, we started I'm, sh I'm sure there are but <laughs> I mean I'm part of the way we write and part of the Marvel process is you know if you have darlings you, you're not gonna the, you're gonna gum up the works okay you know you have to be willing to, to demo them out and then and, and then tear them down if no matter how satisfying they are and the 95% of the time, the reason they leave is because they're not on story. Got and it. it's impossible to defend it if it's not on <laughs> That's story. That's absolutely right. Those movies are long. They're thick. There's a lot going yeah. on. If it's not on the, in Infinity War, if it's not on the stone plot, it went. You know, it just goodbye. We had all sorts of sort of before Thanos, before 
uh, uh, Hulk smashes through the window, all sorts of, here's what we're doing now, catch up on, on all the people <laughs> yeah, in the universe. Previously on. There was a great, I liked it, I don't, it didn't, it was pretty familiar, but uh, terrorists in the Middle East have, have uh, taken a bunch of hostages and they have bags over their heads and they bring them in and they're gonna, and they start taking the bags off, right? And, and, they, and they're starting being mean to these people and the last bag they take off and it's Steve Rogers. Oh. And you go, oh, they're so screwed. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, yeah. yeah. But in a way, <laughs> In a way, that's R and D. It was that leads to <laughs> the satisfaction of Steve appearing behind the train. That's right. Because we realized, oh, there, there's a lot of pleasure to suddenly realizing you have Captain America to, yeah. Yeah. Yes. to kick scene. somebody's that's ass, right. and and I think that vibe fed fed that train moment. So none of these are wasted. You just have to let them go. And they're and they're great little. You guys have literally built an alternate universe. So you've got another option where headcanon can be alternate takes alternate. for these things. That's that right. This is true. That's, that's right. how I've lived that's since right. I discovered that was an option. It's that's amazing. Right. Uh, now, is there a different writing process for writing like a gourmet coffee like the Marvel Universe versus like Monster Energy like Pain and Gain? Because I love both, <laughs> but they're different animals. Uh, I mean. Certainly, Pain and Gain is more satirical. Sure, um, hopefully. And the process is different. Like, you know, when you work for Marvel, you're sort of a, a full-time job, sitting around a table with a lot of people trying to figure it out, go back, grind, a lot of grinding, right? And that, uh, uh, that was a script that we wrote. Uh, we did like two drafts and then turned it over, and, and then Michael did what he did with it. So it's, it's not like we were in Miami on set every day. Got but in, in Marvel, we are. But with yeah. all of them, you know, in... Pain again, you're dealing with just reprehensible psychopaths. But you still have to find the humanity in them, and you still have to find some chip of likability in them, or the movie is just going to turn into porn. And it's the same thing with superheroes. If you don't find the people inside the suits, it's just noise. Um, so in some ways, all the movies we write are the same. You know, It's just going to be a lot of clatter unless you get to the person inside and can lock into that human. Like a horror movie without the heart, it's just gore. It's like you just, have to love yeah. the character that's yes, dying. I've seen plenty of those. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's the problem with them. Uh, now, if there was an alternate universe movie that was not tied at all to, to anything, like Marvel Apes or, or 2099 or zombies. what, what you know, Marvel Zombies, The Dream, Ooh. we saw a little taste. <laughs> saw a little taste of that. I love that taste. It was, yeah, I don't know if I want more, though. I, that's, I, I think that was yeah. the right amount. Oh, I, like, I really oh, enjoyed okay. the, the I'm nod. I'm be much sadder if we kept going. <laughs> yeah. right. Is there any alternate universe you'd love to play in if you, there were no ties, no, no An restraints? An alternate Marvel universe? Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Like a 1602 you know, era. Right. I mean, the, the, one, the medieval one is fun. <laughs> um... <laughs> There are things I wouldn't do. I like, you know, I wouldn't do the ultimates. But we take what the best yeah, parts no, of it are. Yeah, no, I mean, we. Yeah. That's also the thing. We, as as the MCU is its own iteration. Right. right. We're free to sample from everybody's platter. So we do. Uh, <laughs> and so, you know, I certainly haven't felt held back. Like, yeah. that is not the place that where they will tell you, "Are you kidding? You can't do that." <laughs> it's like. Do it. <laughs> As fans, if there was an, an alternate timeline where you had infinite budget and then the studio system didn't Sorry, exist to any level. you didn't see that movie? We do have infinite I, budget. I mean, that's true. You're, I'm, you're not wrong. The last 30 minutes of that movie, Good I was Lord. like, did they film it? How does this even exist in I front know, of me? Uh, so in the universe we live yes, in, yeah. in yeah. with infinite budgets, that's right. uh, is there any characters you'd love to just take and run with? Is there any like, uh, like I mean, Moon Knight or something? There's well, a guy I, I, bring up, I bring up a couple of, a couple of characters every time. <laughs> One Moon Knight because I find him fascinating. Sure. Because he's a schizophrenic. He's Jewish. He's he's cool. You know, you'd have to do a lot of work, but that's what jobs are. <laughs> uh, and I th I sincerely think Modok could be terrifying. Oh, I love right, that. He does like that. Like okay. a big scary head. <laughs> if you saw that coming down a hallway, you would just crap your pants. Like I mean, it would be great. Any for you? You know, I'm a bit of an Anglophile. I just like, you know, sort of part of me wants to drop my life and move to London. So <laughs> if you told me we could do sort of either a Union Jack or a Captain Britain sort of, you know, a Bond, you know, a skewed thing. Yeah. Where, yeah, I would kind of dig that. The, uh, a mild Far From Home spoiler. The fact that we had the universe named in the Far From Home trailer that didn't Ooh, land with Captain Britain was so painful <laughs> for me. The fact that I thought Jake Gyllenhaal is from Captain was, Britain's was universe. I was like, oh. <laughs> uh, is there a moment, a deep cut that most people don't catch that is still in your movies that you've oh, written to and, frame and a comic? Never reference? seen. That, that just people don't know about. Like, 
I love the, the the most obvious one on the posters is the Civil War nod. That's so clearly the yeah, frame. Yeah. Is there anything that's a deep cut that you I guys mean, put in that we haven't noticed? This oh. is the the candy store of Marvel. Is that yeah. what used to be deep cuts are now <laughs> <Zeitgeist>. genuine <laughs> plot threads? Like when we made Cap One and. Sebastian got cast, we were like, boy, he secretly would make a great Winter Soldier. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing about the Winter Soldier in that movie. Yeah. Uh, like, that was a deep cut. You know, now it's integral. Uh, so it's hard to think of something that hasn't been picked up and fleshed out at this point. Right. Um, yeah. huh, I don't even know. Yeah, I don't have a good answer. Like Arnim Zola yeah. was a deep cut until wait, well, we yeah. have a full I'm on. Always, I'm always charmed by the fact when you introduce him, he's already on a screen. Yeah, you know, and then they like, zoom out, and yeah, I love that we kept get that. that already. Like that's the thing. The, it, 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 the Marvel universe is loved enough that people uh, have already picked over its bones and yeah. found all that stuff. Yeah. Bat truck the Libra leaps in and out of frame. Well, like I can't escape pretty, George Saint Pierre yeah. playing and the, like. This. And he's pretty good. It's like, incredible. We, yeah. That's the goal. We've often tried to. Um, uh, resurrect or or uh, uh, make better uh things that could be silly yeah <laughs> you know uh, what's the word i'm looking for uh, rehabilitate yeah. <laughs> right. I knew it was a re. uh yeah so that like you know patrick leaper is, is so a big, good example big uh pace pot pete movie coming oh it's, it's coming yeah. i'm excited yeah. spider-man 3 pace pot pete, <laughs> pete. it's coming That's right. uh now is there one character as fans that you're most excited to see with this fox marvel merger not necessarily like get to play oh, with but like right. oh, who are you ready to see with us i mean Good surfer movie would be great. Right? Yeah, that would be if Just if you proper, could take it full on. Yeah. Cosmic. I want Keanu, just for like I like the voice in the I, '80s I, and like I get all that. But we always say that whenever we cast it, we yeah. always cast the guy you just saw. Right. And Marvel didn't do that. No, you know, they go they go find that guy. You go, oh, I guess maybe. Oh, I love him. Yeah. Right. Well, we got Kurt Russell as a fucking yeah. planet. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. That's right. So Silver Surfer. So is that a, would be I, that would be my first blush because uh, you know I think X Men should rest a second. Same. I could be wrong, but I think you should rest. And then, uh, but Surfer could use a really good standalone. You know. Now, uh, Perry does this thing, uh, one of the other hosts on the channel, she does this Would You Rather, but I wanted to comicize it, so okay. Okay. this is a hard game. Would you rather if you had to kill a storyline so it never existed? We're removing canon, removing continuity. Okay. Would you rather kill Demon in a Bottle or Doom Quest? Which one's Doom Quest? Doom Quest is the one where uh, Doom basically builds a, a, an Iron Man type suit and then it builds to that. So I'm assuming you'd want to kill it because Demon in the Bottle is great. Demon, Demon in the Bottle is great. great. <laughs> important. Yeah, Doom Quest, I got no, nothing for it. Doom yeah. Quest is gone, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Cap No More or Death of Cap? Uh, yeah, you're stumping me because I don't know. The, I don't the, know the titles, the titles I, so, so Cap No More is like, uh, leads to Nomad and Death of Cap is when he gets shot in the stomach on the steps. Oh, well, I'd do Cap No More. Yeah, you gotta I mean, I'd keep Cap No More. Keep Cap No More. Yeah, that's the important one. Uh, the Ballad of Beta Ray Bill or <laughs> God Butcher? Which one's God Butcher? God Butcher's the new Jason Aaron number one that started his tenure oh, run at Random Warriors. To be honest, I haven't read it. Don't know it. Oh, yeah. there you go. God Butcher's yeah, yeah. gone. Yeah. Uh, Craven's Last Hunt or <laughs> Kid Who Collects Spider Man? Oh, is Kid. kid it's the one where he, Yeah, the Make a Wish <laughs> issue. The, the beautiful. <laughs> uh, you know. <laughs> I felt like a monster even writing, writing these. No, yeah, yeah. Craven is a, is a strange character, and well, I've never. Well, in comparison, I think we'll keep Craven. Right? I don't know. Do you? All right. Uh, All right. So Craven. I think so. Craven makes the cut. Steve uh, hates children. P George Perez's Web of Intrigue, uh, where he took over Black Widow and had that great reintroduction of Black Widow, or Mark Wade's Shield's Most Wanted, where she was being hunted by Shield. Uh, Jeez, I, these are things I don't even know. Okay. This is the yeah. thing I've read. <laughs> I've read almost all of them, but I don't know the titles of. And <laughs> that's right. um, the trade paperbacks ringing in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. No, and it had the same thing with Starlin. Like we read all of Starlin, but yeah. I don't quite know the difference between Gauntlet and War. You know, oh right, 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 or even the other one. And yeah. Resurrection, and and and. Uh, uh, but I would say the one where she, I would keep the one where she's not being hunted by Shield because okay. too many people get hunted by Shield. That's right. That's actually one of the last ones. Uh, last three: uh, Matt Fraction's Life as a Weapon or Brian Michael Bendis's Dark Reign for Hawkeye. Is Life as a Weapon is the uh, is Fraction's new one. Uh, the art's by. Asia? Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. got it. Love that. Keep yeah, that. I'll keep that. Okay, beautiful. Uh, and then World War Hulk or Mr. Fix-It? Don't fix it. <laughs> <laughs> fix it's gone. Yes. And finally, uh, Wolverine, now that he's like, becoming part canon, uh, Enemy of the State, where he's being hunted, or Old Man Logan? Uh, keep Old Man Logan, although it 
it's its own timeline. It's grown so much, and now there's a whole there's an old yeah, man yeah, Hawkeye and old yeah, man Quill. Yeah, yeah, it's gotten crazy. Old man Quill. Old really? man Quill's right now. They're on like issue nine. We're nine months into old man Quill. I did not know that. Things have gotten crazy. <laughs> uh, is there anything you guys are reading? If there was a gateway drug for comics, you'd recommend people that haven't gotten into oh, the world. Jeez, that's oh, the thing. Man. I didn't grow up a comic guy. Okay. And so my comic knowledge is only based on research for this job and for this well lifestyle for the last 10 years, right? <laughs> I was a Star Wars guy, I was a, a mild Dungeons and Dragons guy. So I've fallen in love with these characters as of now. I, so, I, you know, I can get called out for not being a comic book fan, but I, I think it's allowed uh, both of us, because Chris was a X-Men guy early on, but less so as he got older. Um, you know, we're coming at it with slightly fresher eyes. We're trying to make uh, big blockbuster stories out of this stuff. It's not merely uh, you know, Easter egg city, right. you know, it's what's the journey of these humans. And if there's time, we'll put in this and this, but in general, we put those things in, um, to support the story we're telling, not just as uh, wallpaper. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, that said, I, there was a, I, my cousin gave me a big box of comics when I was a kid and they all had like no covers and it was a mess, but I read through the damn thing a million times. Uh, there's an issue of the Avengers that, uh, was in the back of my mind and then later in the front of my mind when we were working on this, I think called Death Be Not Proud, where it's uh, probably 60s, where uh, it's the Avengers, it's an iteration of the Avengers, where Panther is in it at some point. Okay. Uh, they have, I think, captured an old Doctor Doom base or something like that, and there's a time machine in it. <laughs> okay. And. Oh, is this? They go back to, to when Zemo yes. is launching the rocket, yes. and and Cap has to witness he and Bucky getting on that thing, and Bucky gonna, is Bucky's going to die again. Yeah. And Wasp is at the controls back in the present day, <laughs> and oh. falls asleep and hits the switch <laughs> that materializes them in the past, and suddenly they have the opportunity to uh, actually stop Bucky from being killed. There's a big fight, and then she manages to press the button and yeah. bring them back again. Yeah. Uh, Sounds slightly. So Endgame has a comic uh, precedent that I never knew about that, until right, this moment. Right. I always, Who doesn't know oh, what he's talking about now? I, you know, yeah. I can, I've been had just as I expected to be. <laughs> Thank you so much, Thank and you. I never thought we could top the moment that the lightning god appeared in Infinity War, but then Mjolnir wielding Cap changed my life. So <laughs> thank you guys so much for all you've done for this magic world. Uh, please tell these men what they mean to you. Thank you so thank much, you. guys. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Cheers. Thanks, everybody.